Have you lost money because you don't pay your bills on time? Did you know that not paying your bills on time can negatively affect your credit score? Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we are talking about bills, bills, bills. We all have bills to pay, and if you are disorganized, you can lose money and much more. Learn tips to declutter and organize your bills as we continue our month focusing on the home office. Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., hear easy to implement tips on decluttering all areas of your life physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic. Learn how to release clutter and get organized to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. An award winning professional organizer and coach, Julie is passionate about supporting people in clearing clutter so they can share their gifts with the world and live a more joyful and fulfilling life. From a 2015 article on NerdWallet, the average household is paying a total of 6,658 in interest per year. Roughly one in four U.S. adults don't always pay their bills on time, according to the NFCC's 2015 Financial Literacy Survey sponsored by NerdWallet. They also found that among U.S. adults aged 18 to 34, just over half are paying their bills on time and have no accounts in collection. I encourage you to check out NerdWallet. It's a pretty cool site. Payment history is the most important factor of your credit score, and having 100% on-time payments puts you in the best position to have a healthy credit score. Receipts. Because I'm a small business owner, I need to keep track of my expenses, including items such as heat and electricity, because I work from home. Even if you don't have a home business, you're going to want to keep receipts to check with your credit card statements. My system for saving receipts is twofold. Again, I try to simplify as much as I can. If I have a paper receipt, I have a folder for the year. I also have a big envelope where I keep all of my paper receipts. I also have a file folder that says 2016. If the receipt is to be used for taxes, it goes into that file once I've checked it against the credit card statement. In my email account, I have a purchases folder as well as a tax folder with the year. If a purchase is tax deductible, I move it to the tax folder after I've checked it against my credit card statement. So I have the same statement, very easy to maintain for both paper and electronic. Create a system to deal with your receipts. As you just heard, mine is very easy. I like it because it is so easy, I will maintain it. It doesn't matter how you set it up, but it needs to work for you and your lifestyle and something that you will maintain. If you create a system for your receipts, but never use it, it won't work. Do you let go of clutter, but then at no time it's back to the way it was? Do your books on releasing clutter and getting organized collect dust on a shelf? Do you know you need to dig deeper on releasing clutter, but keep getting stuck? Our Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out Releasing and Affirming MP3s support you in all areas of your life physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Bills. Have a place where you keep all your bills. One consistent place. Don't change it. Keep it the same place so you know where your bills are. My first tip is to open your bills. No matter what it is, if you bury your head in the sand, you're not going to be able to change it. Lots of people have gotten out of debt, so let that go, but open your bills. Next, you're going to want to check your credit card statements and bills. I have found errors and also discovered when the pizza delivery man was adding a credit card tip on top of the cash chip we gave him. You would be amazed at the number of people who don't reconcile their credit card and bill statements each month. Do it. I encourage you to open your bills as soon as you receive them, so if there are any issues, you can correct immediately and still have your bills get paid on time. In my household, I pay the bills. If you're married or sharing a household, I suggest leaving it to one person. Make sure you have a system that everyone can easily use. 
Maybe you take turns every other year so not one person is in charge of paying the bills forever. Or if something were to happen to someone who mainly pays a bill, you want an easy to use system that the other person would be able to start using immediately. Choose two times a month to pay bills. Most people do it on the 15th and 30th, along with getting paid, but do what works best for you. Two times to pay bills monthly should have you covered. Establish a set place for paying your bills and find a place to store your checkbook, pens, stamps, and envelopes. Return them to the same place every time you use them. Tips. Put your account number or your insurance number when paying by check so if your bill gets separated, your check can be applied to your account. Mark tax with a colored pen in your checkbook or make a check mark so you can easily find tax deductions. Electronic bill paying. Many companies have moved to accepting online payments and this can save you money with no more stamps and usually saves you time as well. As with paper bills, you need to set up a system. I suggest setting up an email address dedicated to bills only. Caracciobills at gmail.com. Nothing but bills go there. In some cases, such as with my mortgage, you can designate the day and amount where your payment is deducted. Bills such as electric or gas that usually vary from month to month usually need to be paid each time. Choose two times a month to pay your electronic bills. Mint Bills is a free app designed to help people stay on top of their bills by monitoring bank and credit card accounts. If you drop to a dangerously low bank balance or a bill is coming due, it'll let you know. For a fee, you can use File This to link with all your online accounts and get a complete overview of your accounts, banks, wealth, health, auto, utilities, communication, and retail. And finally, have gratitude when paying your bills, especially if you begrudgingly pay your bills. I always write a thank you and close with a heart on my checks. A teller at the bank told me they won't see it, but I know they would feel it, and it's also an important ritual for me to do. Takeaways from today's podcast. Create a system for managing receipts and bills that is easy to maintain. Be consistent and keep in the same place. Choose two days each month to pay bills. Most people do on the 15th and 30th, coinciding with paydays. Have gratitude when paying your bills, especially if you really dislike paying them. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Thanks for listening to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. Sign up for our newsletter and receive a free copy of our 10 clutter-free living tips. Ready to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire? Learn about Julie's services including coaching, classes, affirmations, aromatherapy, and her unique How to Declutter Your Life course and more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Don't forget to subscribe and join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.